Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me. Box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net. Uh, you can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. And I want to thank Pete for coming aboard at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Pete. Now, it's time for this week's episode of Sam Spade. And this will actually bring to a close our run of 16 straight weeks without a lost episode of Sam Spade. But after two weeks of lost episodes, we'll continue our run of 19 of 21 in circulation next week. Well, today's program originally aired October the 3rd, 1948, and the title is The Sugar Cane Keeper. The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic, the non-alcoholic hair tonic that contains lanolin. Wild Root Cream Oil, again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. Agency. They offered me a cool million and a half, but I couldn't be bought. Oh, Sam, all the time fooling. Straight goods, Abby. Oh, really, Sam? Why didn't you take it? Oh, but you couldn't, of course. That's right, Angel. Taxes. Oh, you mean it would put you in a bracket? Uh, the girl's name, in case you were going to ask, was Sugar Cane. Was she sweet? Oh, Effie, you made a joke. Oh, not much of one, though. That is true, but even though you do seem to be, as you would say, in a jugular vein... I shall be right down, serious and frowning, to dictate a chronicle steeped in the bitter tea of general confusion, brewed in a witch's cauldron of murder, greed, and avarice. That's what gives it that nutty flavor. What, Sam? Silly girl, I refer to the sugar cane caper, on which I will forthwith my report be down to dictate on, uh, uh it, uh, uh, with, uh, goodbye. <laughs> Dashiell Hammett, America's leading detective fiction writer and creator of Sam Spade, the hard-boiled private eye, and William Spear, radio's outstanding producer-director of mystery and crime drama, join their talents to make your hair stand on end with the adventures of Sam Spade. Presented by the makers of Wild Root Cream Oil for the hair. Want to look better on the job? Get Wild Root Cream Oil. Want to look better to that gal of yours? Get Wild Root Cream Oil. Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic improves your entire appearance by grooming your hair neatly and naturally, relieving dryness, removing loose dandruff. If your family hasn't yet enjoyed the benefits of America's leading hair tonic, here's what to do about it. Ask at your drug or toilet goods counter for the new 25-cent Get Acquainted bottle of Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. And now, with Howard Duff starring as Spade, Wild Root brings to the air the greatest private detective of them all in the adventures of Sam Spade. Hello, Sam. How are you, Sam? Hmm? You were so lugubrious over the phone. Sometimes you're so... Bucolic, but tonight... What am I? When? Lugubrious tonight. Just, just, just bowling over. Do you uh, possibly mean I'm being lush with my verbiage? There, you see? Well, that's because I've been at work in the environs of Snob Hill, where they never use one word if 12 will do. <laughs> Are you uh, ready for the uh, dictation, I guess it is? I plan to be most amusing tonight. Already <laughs> I am yet. <laughs> Look, I haven't even started. Oh. Really, I haven't. All right. <laughs> now, pencil. <laughs> Date. <laughs> Alan should have such an audience. Date. October 3rd, 1948, to Clifton Cavanaugh, Esquire. <laughs> Down, Effie. 
From Samuel Spade, license number 137596. Subject, the Sugar Cane Caper. On Thursday last, at 11 a.m., as I waited for the traffic signal so that I might legally cross Powell Street in order to board a cable car, a cat rubbed up against my leg. I leaned over to stroke it and noticed that it had six toes. I wondered if that meant anything. It didn't. Most Knob Hill addresses don't mean much anymore, but yours still does. The house was big, hideous, and reassuring. Oh. Are you from Pepper Snow? Uh, no, I'm in business for myself. Mr. Cavanaugh in? No. Oh. Well, come on in. I can't understand what happened to that boy from Pepper Snow. Oh, uh, pardon me if I seem a little hungover. Gladly, but can you ever forgive yourself? <laughs> I like you. You got a sense of humor. You'll need it. You were uh, trying to tell me you don't approve of Mr. Cavanaugh? That perfume pothead. What did he do to you? He married my mother. Oh. Stepfather? Yeah. Oh, I'm Fred Blair. Spade's my name. Where do I find him? Detective? Check. I'll give you a clue. Look behind you. I did. I turned and found myself looking straight into your handsome face. You looked several years younger than your stepson with regular aquiline features, dark, widely spaced eyes, and blue-black hair. Well, so you're the notorious Sam Spade. Well, I don't want to seem modest. Come into the conservatory. There's just the barest chance that we'll not be overheard. Good. Oh, there. Sit down. Uh, what's your problem, Mr. Cavanaugh? Problem indeed. Problems, plural. Starting with that junior grade lush that collared you at the door. He's very fond of you, too. Well, you can't imagine what a trial that boy's been to me. Both the children. For some reason, neither Fred nor his sister Eunice ever quite accepted me as their father. You don't say? I suppose my youth counted against me. I think they misinterpreted my motives. When any man marries a wealthy widow twice his age... Yeah. yeah why did you send for me, Mr. Cavanaugh? Well, it all started several months back, before my wife, uh, their mother, uh, the, uh, uh, where was I? Oh, died. The scandal quite literally killed her. You're sure that's what did the trick? Fred, uh, who, among other talents, was a positive genius for knowing the wrong sort of people, struck up an acquaintance with a hoodlum named Johnny Verona. Nice, clean-cut gangster type, runs a joint on Pacific Street. Precisely. With the positively hysterical name of the Subtropical. Mm hmm well, there was a sordid brawl of some sort. A man shot. Obviously, this Johnny Verona shot him. Fred had to give testimony before the grand jury. It was all we could do to keep it out of the paper. But you did. No. And old Eleanor, my wife, that is, uh, dropped dead when the butler brought in the Chronicle. But the worst was yet to come, Sam. Well, uh, don't keep me hanging, Cliff. Uh, well, Fred continued to frequent this bistro, this dive of Verona's. I understand. I believe the bait is a toothsome little teaser with the unlikely name of Sugar Cane. She likes Fred. No woman in her right mind would look twice at that idiot, even if he were twice as rich and only half a sodden. That, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, this, this, uh, uh, this Verona person came here several times on the pretext of pouring Fred through the front door and thereby bet, met my, my, my stepdaughter, Eunice. Well, uh, that's uh, a very interesting story, Mr. Cavanaugh. Now, uh... Maybe you'll tell me what you want a detective for. Because my stepdaughter has brazenly informed me that she intends to marry this gangster. I want you to help me prevent that marriage. I uh, don't see. Don't see what? I don't see how I can. Well, perhaps I didn't make myself clear. When Verona was arrested for that shooting in his club, Fred didn't tell the grand jury all he knew. Now, if you could prove that Verona is guilty, then we'd be rid of him for good. Is it Verona you want to get rid of or your stepson? Good Lord, you don't, you don't think Fred did it? Do you? Why, no, of course not. Okay, supposing Verona did it, then Fred goes up on a perjury rap, maybe accessory. Oh. Well, I have no overwhelming desire to injure Fred. Uh, look, why don't you tell me what you have an overwhelming desire for? Well, under the terms of her mother's will, Eunice will inherit $3 million as soon as she marries. When? Uh, when what? When do I meet her? Be serious, man. Now, I will pay Verona $50,000 in cash if he'll stay away from her. Would you take fifty grand as the payoff in a $3 million caper? In this instance, yes. Eunice is not very well, and you may quote me on that. Book, chapter, and verse. To Johnny Verona? Uh, to Johnny Verona. Okay. 
Water's mighty cold this time of the year at the bottom of the bay, but if you don't care, I don't. Thank you. Let me know how it comes out. Don't give it a second thought. You'll know. Uh, don't get up, Mr. Cavanaugh. I know the way out. Hey, Spade, wait up. Well, you look a little better. Listen, there's something you ought to know. He was my sister's boyfriend before he married my mother. He did it out of revenge because Eunice threw him over. He still wants to marry her. Any particular reason? Oh, my mother put that crazy marriage clause in her will. He's been systematically getting rid of every man who's been interested in her. Brought him off, threatened him off any way he could. Why? He thinks Eunice will eventually marry him to get her inheritance. But she won't. She'll kill him first, and if she doesn't, I'll do it for her. Fred! Huh? Oh, yeah? Fred, what on earth are you saying? Who is this man? Well, he's the detective. Sam Spade. You're Eunice Blair? Yes, I want to talk to you. Fred, go, go and... Yeah. Uh, see you later, Spade. I know why my stepfather hired you, Mr. Spade. If you need the money, go ahead. But this time, it won't work. You look as if you'd like to be a nice girl. How did you happen to settle for a cheap grifter like Johnny Verona? Because we understand each other, and he can't be scared off. Any message I can take him from you? Tell Johnny I'll meet him at the usual place. And tell him I still like my coffee black. No sugar. <laughs> I didn't ask her what kind of sugar she didn't want any of. I thought I knew. Hey, wait a the only thing wrong with uh, Sugar Cane's dance was her dancing, but the customers didn't seem to mind, and I didn't either. It was a pleasure to size her up carefully, as I would have felt obliged to do anyway in my professional capacity. She was a black-haired number with aquiline features and widely spaced dark eyes. It was a beautiful combination, and I wondered where I'd seen it before quite recently. I decided to find out. What's the idea of barging in here after me? Can't you see the sign on the door? No customers in the dressing room. Then let's go someplace else. I want to talk to you. Beat it. Take it easy. This is on business. Good. I'll fix it up with the boss. Johnny. Yeah, sugar. Uh, what's the matter? Is Joe giving you trouble? You trailed in here after me, the cheap masher. On the pretext of discussing business affairs. Okay, out you go. Hey, wait a minute. Come on, move. And don't uh, come back. Well? Uh, sorry, I had to give that bum's rush routine. I don't want to get her excited. She's a nice kid, and she doesn't know why you're here. I take it you do. Yeah. Eunice called me and told me you'd be down. Okay, Johnny, I'll give it to you fast and get out. Clifton Cavanaugh will pay you 50 grand to leave Eunice alone. He also made a few idle or not-so-idle threats about what might happen to her if you don't take his money. Uh, for example? He said she hasn't been feeling well, might not live long enough to get married. I don't have to tell you what I think about that kind of talk, and I wouldn't be peddling it if my office rent wasn't due. That's why when you started giving me that bum's rush, I made only, shall we say, a token resistance? Yeah. About me, Mary, and Eunice, you can tell Clifton to stop worrying. Hmm? Yeah, Eunice and I got married three weeks ago. You what? Mary. Oh, you want to see the papers? Why the secrecy? I don't want her to get hurt. You're scared of Clifton? Nah. Sugar. She's got a very low boiling point. She's a... Oh, uh, pardon me. Yeah. Yeah, Nick. What is? Go ahead. Yeah, I heard you. No, no, don't touch anything. Don't let anybody in. I'll be right over. Bad news? Yeah, Eunice. She's dead. How? Uh, one of my boys found her in my apartment. She was supposed to wait for me there. How did it happen? He's not sure. He thinks she took poison. I had to give Johnny Verona one thing. He didn't make any pretense about being grief-stricken. But after all, he just inherited three million bucks. Sugar Cane took it standing up, too, but she just lost a rival and got her man back three million bucks richer. I wasn't with you when you got the news, Mr. Cavanaugh. But the one I really wondered about was Eunice's brother, Fred. What brought that on was something I picked up in Johnny Verona's apartment where we found Eunice's body sprawled out over a tray of coffee things. It was a medicine bottle with a doctor's prescription number on the label. The name of the druggist that had put it up was Pfefferschnau. I remembered what Fred had said to me when he admitted me to your house that afternoon. Quote, are you the man from Pfefferschnau's? 
I wondered if I'd answered yes, would Eunice still be alive? The makers of Wild Root Cream Oil are presenting the weekly Sunday adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, Sam Spade. Now, here's important news on good grooming. If you want the well-groomed look that helps you get ahead socially and on the job, listen. Recently, thousands of people from coast to coast who bought Wild Root Cream Oil for the first time were asked, how does Wild Root Cream Oil compare with the hair tonic you previously used? The results were amazing. Better than four out of five who replied said they preferred Wild Root Cream Oil. Remember, non-alcoholic Wild Root Cream Oil contains lanolin. It grooms the hair naturally, relieves dryness, and removes loose, ugly dandruff. So if you want your hair to be more attractive than ever before, get the generous new 25-cent size of Wild Root Cream Oil, America's leading hair tonic on sale at all drug and toilet goods counters. It's also available in larger economy bottles and the handy new tube. Get Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. By the way, smart girls use Wild Root Cream Oil too, and mothers say it's grand for training children's hair. And now, back to the Sugar Cane Caper. Tonight's adventure with Sam Spade. The morning papers didn't carry anything new on Eunice's death. The cause was put down to an overdose of a toxic drug... The doctor who prescribed it said she'd requested it for migraine headaches, which he suggested might have driven her to suicide. He did not explain why she had taken four doses in capsule form and dissolved the rest of it in a decanter of coffee. I thought somebody else had dosed the coffee, and so did you, Mr. Cavanaugh. Verona did it, of course. He knew she was taking those pills and dosed the coffee just enough to be fatal when added to what she took voluntarily. You knew all that, too. Well, so did Fred. But you had more reasons, three million more. But they were already married. You know that when you hired me? Yes. Then how come? I knew she was planning to do away with herself. I thought if we could pin it on Verona, after all, he's guilty of that old murder. Fred's a witness to that. Well, if he were convicted, the money would revert to me. Nuts. You don't believe me? She wasn't planning suicide, and you know it. Well, then? I don't care who takes the fall, but I got less on Verona than I got on you. Then I'll give you something. Here. Take a look. Verona's lawyer sent this around before her body was cold. A claim for three million dollars, notarized yesterday while Eunice was still alive. Well, Mr. Spade? Pardon me when I drop dead. You did and waited, hopefully, but I managed to stay on my feet. I even managed to make it down the hall to the bar where I found your stepson ambushed behind a row of empty bottles. Fine detective you turn out to be. I warned you. Stand up like a man. That's all right. I'll take on both of you. Come on, sober up. Makes sense. Where's my drink? Who took my glass? Here it is. Give me a... Sure. You spill it. Nice. Oh, my shirt. Listen to me. This is very important. Important? You were expecting a delivery from a drugstore when I arrived here yesterday morning. Who ordered it? She did. Eunice, she told me to watch for it and bring it to her. Did you do that? No. No, she wasn't here. What did you do with that bottle of medicine? I'm sleepy. I gotta get some rest. Wake up! I said, wake up! Leave me alone! Now, now, listen. You took that bottle with you when you went out. Where did you take it? I tell you when you let me go to sleep. You took that bottle with you, didn't you? You're guessing. I know you're third degree. You went to Verona's apartment, didn't you? Two gentlemen of Verona. Willie Shakespeare. You doped that coffee, didn't you, with the poison that killed your sister? I didn't mean it for her. I I didn't know she was going there. Go on talking. (laughs) I want a lawyer. I I know my rights. Listen, I'm not a cop. I'm not taking a statement. You're too drunk for it to hold anyway, so you can tell me. Uh, Okay. Here's how it happened. She, she took her four pills and went to bed. Yeah? I, I, I sneaked a bottle out of the medicine chest and I went over to his place. His boy Nick was there making 
coffee for the boss, he said, when he got home. I hung around talking for a while, and I, I, I slipped some of the stuff in the percolator while he was getting out the cups. And, and that's all. Why did you want to kill Johnny Verona? So Eunice wouldn't have to marry him. What do you mean, have to? <laughs> she was doing it for me, so he'd keep quiet. About that brawl in the club, that old killing they tried to nail Johnny for? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. That, uh, the gun that did it. He, he got rid of it before the cops arrived. That was my gun. Brad, straighten up. Look. Yeah. Johnny dictated the story you told the grand jury. How do I know he didn't dictate the one you're telling me now? Who are you covering for? I, I didn't say anything. I didn't tell you anything. Get out of here! What's the matter with you? I... Get, get out the window! The revolver barrel that crashed through the darkened window pane behind the bar spoke twice. I answered it. I looked out into the darkness, making myself a good enough target to draw some fire. I fired back at the flashes. I was depending more on luck than aim, and luck was what I wasn't having much of. I went back to the place where Fred had fallen. The shots that had dropped him were luckier. He'd been dead before he hit the floor. What is it? What's happened here? See for yourself. Who? Shot through the window. Couldn't see anything but the gun muzzle. Looked like a forty-five. Johnny Verona, he packs a forty-five. Who told you that? It came out of that investigation, one of the reasons they couldn't indict for that old shooting. There are a lot of reasons they couldn't get that indictment. What are you driving at? Neither one of the leading suspects was guilty. I don't follow you. Sugar Kane did that job. That's wild. What if I told you Fred made a statement of that effect before he was shot? You're lying. He confessed. Did I tell you that? Well, he must have. He, he always talked about it when he was drunk. All right. All right, I was bluffing. Why? Just a crazy hunch. I thought there might be something between you and Sugar. Now I'm sure there isn't. Of course not. Should have spotted it before. You're too much the same type. Even look alike. I can't make you out. Well, don't try. It's not worth it. Uh, you better call homicide about Fred here. Tell Lieutenant Dundee if he wants my statement, I'll be at my apartment. After I pretended to leave, I came back and did a little eavesdropping of my own. You didn't phone Homicide, but you did spend an hour filing out the barrel of a forty-five automatic. Then you went out. I tailed you to an address on Slope Boulevard. A short time after you went in, Sugar Cane came out alone. I followed her to, you know the answer, my apartment. I went in the back way via the fire escape and arrived in time to answer her buzz. Oh, Mr. Spade, thank heaven I found you at home. So am I. Come in. I know it's terribly late. Forget I... it. Why don't you take off your, uh... Coat or something? Can't stay very long. It's not safe. I may have been followed here. Oh, surely not. Sam, you don't mind if I call you Sam? No. I'm so frightened. It's about Johnny Verona. I don't know what he may do. He's convinced that Fred killed Eunice and he's out gunning for him right now. We've got to stop him before he does anything rash. You come to the wrong party, sugar. I'm working for the enemy. Enemy? Kavanaugh. Oh. It's no skin off his nose if Johnny Verona drops Fred Blair or if you all drop all he does is sit back and collect. Oh, he can't be as cynical as that. You ought to know. Has he told you anything about me? I'd rather hear it from you. Maybe sit down. Well, there's not much to tell. I played along with Johnny for one reason and one reason alone. To save Fred from that old murder rat. Were you uh, figuring on marrying into that family, too? Oh, sir. A regular pincers movement, wasn't it? Johnny and Eunice, you and Fred. All right. It's true, I wasn't in love with Fred, but it wasn't all the money. I was sorry for him. Money's not what I really want. I know that now. What do you want? Someone. Someone I can trust. Me too, sugar. Oh, Sam, you're what I want. Say you want me to. Please say it. Don't answer it, Sam. Why not? Johnny may have followed me here. He's insanely jealous. Well, I gotta face it out with him sooner or later. Might as well be now. Sam, be careful. Stand out of the way, sugar. No, Sam. No, no, please. Don't reach, Johnny. I'm not gunning for you, Spade. In that case, come on in. Well, sugar. I didn't believe him that you were coming here. I had to, Johnny. He got some crazy confession out of Fred while he was drunk. I had to stall him until you and Cliff could talk to him. To save Fred, I mean. Oh, stop horsing around. We all know that we all know Fred is dead, and we all know that we all know who killed him. Oh, uh, then Cliff was leveling. 
You are trying to pin that on me. I don't need it, but if you want it, you can have it. There's three million bucks in my part of it. I'll split down with the middle with you. If you throw in with them, it's a three-way split. There's no split at all if you take the rap for Eunice's killing, and you will if you throw in with me. It's their word against mine. Two witnesses against one, and all I've got is a confession by a drunk who is now dead. Sam. Oh, Sam, I was sure for a moment you... Get away from me. Sam, I... <laughs> Go on. Go to work on him. I should have given you a little more time. That wasn't fair, was it, Sugar? I hate you. I hate you both. I never want to see you again. Get back in that room, Sugar. Cliff. What happened, Sugar? Why were you running away? Johnny double-crossed us. Now, Sam knows everything. What does he know? The whole caver. Part of it I wasn't quite sure of until I saw you and Sugar standing side by side. That blue-black hair, the same eyes, plus the fact that the bell on Sugar's apartment on Sloat Boulevard reads Kane, parenthesis, Kavanaugh. You took a crazy chance when you knocked off Fred with me right there in the room. The kind of a crazy chance a brother would take to keep his sister clear. I could have told you that. It would have helped a lot, Johnny, but you didn't. A man lets his sister go on dancing in a joint like yours after he's in the chips and she goes on liking it. You can be sure they're both playing for big stakes and for nobody but themselves. Where do you think you were supposed to wind up, Johnny? I'll tell you. Drinking that poison coffee that Eunice got hold of by mistake. That isn't true, Johnny. I never told Fred a thing. He thought you really loved Eunice. I don't know how he found out you were forcing her into that marriage. Uh, did you also neglect to tell him that he was innocent? That you pulled a trigger in that old killing and, and shoved a gun into his hand when he was too drunk to know what he was doing? I've heard enough. Watch it, Johnny. No! <laughs> I winged you a split second before you fired. Your aim went wild. All I saw at first was that it missed Johnny. Then I saw him move forward in her direction. She was leaning against the wall, a puzzled expression on her face. Her hand plucking nervously at a spot of red that was spreading against the white of her dress. He caught her as she pitched forward and carried her over to a couch. She didn't speak again. You and Johnny knelt beside her until the cops arrived. If you were aware of each other's presence, neither of you showed it. Period. And a report. That was a sad ending, Sam. Yes, it is. I'm sorry it ended so sadly. Well, it was bound to one way or the other. There wasn't anybody in the whole gallery that thought about anybody but himself. Except poor Fred, I guess, and his, his only friends arrived in bottles and left in the ash can. All those millions and millions. Oh, get the money now, Sam. I'm glad you asked that. It leaves me cold. Go type that up while I nip myself a sweater. And now, listen to this. It's the smart mother who sees to it that Wild Root Cream Oil is always kept handy around the house. For she knows that Wild Root Cream Oil grooms her family's hair neatly and naturally, relieves dryness, removes loose dandruff. Get acquainted by asking for the new 25-cent bottle. Also, ask your barber for a professional application of Wild Root Cream Oil hair tonic. Again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. terrible group of unfortunates. Hmm? As you say, it just had to end badly. If you hope to get back in my good graces by quoting me to trick me into agreeing with you, you have succeeded. Oh, there you go, Sam. So lugubrious. Effie, what is this? What means lugubrious? Oh, Sam, it's wonderful. It's my new habit. Oh. Every time I read a book now, mm -hmm. and you know, like you read a book and there's a word you don't know what it means or you're not sure. Yeah. Well, I make it a practice now to write down and learn three new words per day. Well. And learn the definitions to use them in conversation. You know, like, uh, desultory. And lugubrious. Yes, that's one of my three for today. Mm. You see? Lugubrious. Right here it is. Mm -hmm. To talk a great deal. Um, bucolic state of being sorrowful and verbose to be out in the country. I see, I see. Very praiseworthy. <laughs> Enlarging your vocabulary. Yes, love it, I love am. it. I am. But I don't expect to be really lugubrious for, oh, for the nonce. Uh, look, Effie, why don't you go verbose for the weekend? It's the best cure for the bucolic. Oh, Sam, look what I've done. What have you done? I've clipped the wrong definition to the right words. Well. For instance, lugubrious, well, it isn't that at all. Mm -hmm. And bucolic, oh, you see. Oh, Sam, I've learned them wrong. I wasn't going to tell you, Effie. It's better to find out for yourself. It's more, uh, Effie cases. My new habit. Oh. Good night, Sam. Good night, sweetheart. The 
Adventures of Sam Spade, Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, are produced and directed by William Spear. Sam Spade is played by Howard Dove. Lorene Tuttle is Effie. The Adventures of Sam Spade are written for radio by Bob Tallman and Gil Dow. Musical direction by Lud Gluskin with score composed by Rene Garrigan. Join us again next Sunday when author Dashiell Hammett and producer William Spear join forces for another adventure with Sam Spade. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. This is Dick Joy reminding you to... Get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie. It keeps your hair in trim. You see, it's non-alcoholic, Charlie. It's made with Susan Lanolin. You better get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie. Start using it today. You'll find that you will have a tough time, Charlie. Keeping all the gals away. Are you baldy? Get Wild Root right away. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, one of those cases where everybody's horrible and Sam's just got to sort it out the best he can. Effie's idea of learning new words, I think, is a solid one. It's not necessarily easy to carry out. But then again, most good ideas aren't. Well, we turn now to listener comments and feedback, and I had a question posed in response to a tweet I posted commemorating the old-time radio Lady Sleuth feed reaching 4,000 downloads. DLAFO asked, aside from Candy Matson, what else would be on it? And this is a good question. Now, Candy Matson, there are 14 episodes, but that's only 37% of what's on the feed. We also have Defense Attorney, starring Mercedes McCambridge. The great uh, miniseries, The Airmail Mystery, featuring Irene Delroy. And we have a couple of series with a single episode currently in Policewoman and Miss Pinkerton Incorporated. In addition to that, we have some film adaptations uh, with uh, female leads, including the ex-Mrs. Bradford, The High Wall, and Spellbound, along with uh, episodes of anthology series such as The Columbia Workshop, Suspense, Murder Clinic, and the more a mystery uh, theater that feature female leads. And we have that at feed because it's a pretty rare thing uh, for Golden Age of Radio Detective programs. Slightly more than 99% of the episodes we played have featured male protagonists, so that feed just makes it easy to find them. Of course, that feed's going to get a bit bigger over the next few weeks, as we will be playing two short detective comedy series with uh, female leads in Sarah's Private Caper, and then a few weeks later in Meet Miss Sherlock. Thanks so much for the question, and I hope listeners who might be interested in that feed will search it out. Well, now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to John, Patreon supporter since September 2016. Currently supporting us at the shameless level of $4 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, John. And that will actually do it for today. If you're not subscribed to the podcast, you can do so using your favorite podcast software, including TuneIn, Stitcher, Apple Podcast, or the Amazon Music app at Amazon.com slash OTR Detectives. If you are enjoying this podcast, please be sure to rate and review it wherever you download your podcast from. We'll be back next Monday with another episode of Sam Spade. Coming up a week from Tuesday, we're going to bring you Sarah's Private Caper. But join us back here tomorrow for the final episode of I Hate Crime, where... It was a dame. Stretched out cold. I nearly broke an ankle in a pothole getting to the body. Help me! Help! Don't move! She was young, full of curves as the Hume Highway, but no potholes. Her eyes matched the night, dark. But there were no stars, only fear. 
Please help me. Where's it hurt? Uh, I, I... Legs busted? Let me feel. <laughs> hey! Take your hands off me. But I... Take them off. You mean swipe by a hit and run? It's my sister. Can't knock her too? No. She won't wake up. It was the soup. Uh, luck, M Miss... Uh, Laurel, Lynn Laurel. Oh, please help me. Hey, hey, what's your angle, babe? I, I had to lie on the road. It was the only way I could make you stop. Oh, please hurry. Why me? Other cars have driven along here tonight. <laughs> they wouldn't stop. They thought I was a gypsy. What is this? Oh, please. It's Lorna, my sister. Yeah, she won't wake up. I, I tried. Listen, sweetheart, maybe I'm tired. Maybe I'm not ticking over too well. Get in my car. I've, I've got a slug of scotch. But don't you understand? I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Great Detectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.